We'll start on page four of the Order of Service, and let's stand. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Raising our eyes to heaven we pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant growth to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to listen to our first hymn. It's number 496. We sit to uh, sing it through in our heads.
sit or kneel for our prayers and penitence. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first command is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and dream. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours and disasters. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to mend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and Forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. God. O God, for without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant the Holy Spirit, may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord. Amen. We sit for reading from the Bible. This evening's reading from the New Testament is taken from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading from the Gospel. The Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning to read from the 15th verse. Hear the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Then the Pharisees met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. They sent some of their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to meet with him. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. You teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and don't play favourites. Now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Why are you trying to trap me? Here, show me the coin used for the tax. When they handed him a Roman coin, he asked, Whose picture and title was stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. His reply amazed them, and they went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about this teaching, it may help us and direct us, enable us to grow in joy and perseverance. In Jesus' name. Amen. The reading from Thessalonians that we had is probably the first bit of the New Testament that was written. It's uh, likely that it was written about 20 years after Jesus died and uh, very soon after uh, the story in Acts 16 where St Paul and Silas and Timothy go to Thessalonica and they go there and uh, they're only there for four weeks before they're kicked out. Uh, because of hounding by the local people and uh, they, at that time they find people who decide not to follow Christ and so Paul is worried about them uh, so he uh, sends Timothy back and he gets a report on how well they are doing and how they are surviving persecution and how they are sticking with their new faith and so he writes to them and the first thing that is written in the New Testament is encouragement to these people for turning away from idols, for standing up for good and the right things. The, at the time, I think probably the, the correct reading of the beginning of the letter is uh, St. Paul to the Church of Thessalonians of the Thessalonians and uh, the, it's probably a play on uh, the fact that around then Augustus Caesar had a, a coin which on one side was stamped with Caesar and it was a picture of him, uh, well a picture of him and it said God and on the other side it had Augustus uh, of and of the Thessalonians. Uh, so Caesar was the god of the Thessalonians. That was his idea. And these people are, are driven by that kind of idolatry that uh, the ruler of the empire is a god who you have to obey and do everything for. And also uh, they are influenced by all sorts of other gods around them who draw them into ways of being which involve uh, control, power for the rich, I, that's the kind of thing the Roman Empire was into, um, all sorts of misuse of uh, slavery and so on. And all these things which uh, stand for idolatry, as well as a worship of other gods, as well as all sorts of uh, strange acts and so on. And the people have chosen to follow uh, Jesus, but of course they are opposed to stand against the Roman Empire and to say, actually, I am of Christ rather than I am of Augustus, is a, a very much a, a big thing to say, and it causes shockwaves. And yet they stick to it because they have found something that is so much more worthwhile. Something that gives them the hope of everlasting life, something that gives them satisfaction and direction now, something that brings them great joy and forgiveness. And so uh, they are willing to face up to opposition. And so Paul praises them and says how everybody recognises them for who they are. 
And so as we uh, hear of them and hear of how the first Christians, the first bit of the New Testament is written to encourage, let us also be encouraged because in our day and age there are few of us. We struggle against all sorts of ideas and ideals that are not supportive of what we stand for and what we want to achieve in bringing God's love and bringing equality and making our world a better place and allowing the worship of the true God to happen. But we are to be encouraged because we continue. We continue to do what uh, we feel is the right thing and we find joy in doing so and we find joy in reaching out to others. So let us also know that we are recognised by others for what we do. That God sees us and is pleased with us. And let us determine to carry on. And hopefully, maybe, one day, uh, when people look into the future, they'll look back and say, yes, just as they did of that small struggling church of that time. And are able to see that faithfulness has brought fruit, just as it did for them. We pray that God may bless us and lead us. Amen. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, 
and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. From page 16, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We take away the sin of the world, have the world sin of us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have the world sin of us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I shall bring the communion to you. We continue in prayer. Holy and blessed God of all grace, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son, and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. To our Lord and King we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And if his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and all whom you love, both now and evermore. Amen. We listen to hymn number 442. serve them. 